Good morning, everybody. On this date in 1765, March 24, Parliament passed the Quartering Act, and this required the colonists to be in charge of housing for British soldiers. And this is part of the background to our Third Amendment, which is in the Bill of Rights. The French and Indian War happened on the locations you see here between France and its Indian allies and Britain and its Indian allies. And when it was finished, Britain was victorious but had a lot of debt. So over the next few years, Parliament will be attempting to make up that debt by taxing the American colonists. And one of the big expenses had to do with the 10,000 or so redcoats who were on North American soil, especially where were they going to stay? So that's the background to our event, the Quartering Act. Now, what were the Redcoats supposed to do? In 1763, Parliament passed the Proclamation of 1763, in which it established that red line. The idea was that the English were to stay east of that red line, and that was one thing the Redcoats were supposed to do, is patrol that area. In 1764, Parliament passed the Sugar Act. It was one of the first taxes specifically for military costs. Now here's the barracks. This is our event for today, the Quartering Act. And the Quartering Act maintained that the first place soldiers should stay should be in barracks. And these are barracks outside of Trent, New Jersey from that era. But the idea was that the colonists would pay for that. Now, if barracks couldn't be found, then soldiers were to stay in inns, costs again to be borne by the colonists. And then if that wasn't available, then places like this, these are stables, but stables, barns, outbuildings. So there were all kinds of places soldiers could stay. The same year that the Quartering Act was passed, Parliament passed the Stamp Act, and these are stamps and uh, the idea was any legal paper, like a will or a contract, needed to have a stamp on it that cost something. Even playing cards needed stamps. So this raised a lot of revenue for the crown, but it also raised a lot of anger. And one group that got started was the Sons of Liberty, pictured here. So the Sons of Liberty come out of that time period where there's a lot of resentment against Parliament for taxing. And eventually, the stamp uh, tax was repealed, but the same year, Parliament passed the Declaratory Act, in which they basically declared, we can pass whatever law we think is appropriate. So even though the, the Stamp Act had been um, removed, Parliament was still saying, we're running the show. The next year, in 1767, Parliament passed the Townsend Acts, where which were specific taxes on things like glass and lead, and also tea. Now, many of the Townsend taxes were repealed, but not the tea tax. And then eventually, in 1773, the Tea Party happened in Boston. And this is in this context of who has the power to tax. Is it Parliament in London? or is it the local legislatures? And that's what the colonists thought. And that, that's the big issue. Once the Tea Party was finished, Parliament passed what we called the Intolerable Acts, which really punished the Port of Boston. It did some other things too. But look at the last one. There's now a new Quartering Act. And that had in it everything from the prior Quartering Act. But what was different was now soldiers could stay in private Home. So if you were a, a homeowner, you had your own family, but now you had a red coat or two to feed and take care of. And that cost was all on you. So when we became independent and we wrote the Bill of Rights, we included the Third Amendment, which specifically refers to soldiers being in private homes. A reminder that so many of the rights that we have come out of our background as English colonists.